opinions, viewpoints, and beliefs presented on this program do not necessarily reflect those of the management, the affiliates, and broadcast partners, or the sponsors. Listener discretion is advised. Gamefest Radio, the radio you can see. And hello and good evening, everyone, and welcome to another edition of Scarefest Television. The original broadcast date is February 19th, 2021. As the... I lost February. I I was uh, sending someone a message today, and it included dates for March, and I literally forgot what freaking month I was in. So anyway, that's kind of how my life is going. Our special guest tonight is Mr. Sean Whalen. Hello, Sean. Welcome back to the show. Hello, everybody. How are you? Happy Friday. And then uh, ju- just to give you a plug, I got Chad Harlan is back co-hosting yet again, everybody, because he's that, hey, guys. He's that dedicated. Uh, so, uh, Tonight, uh, in the process of everything, we are going to have, we have a new celebrity announcement um, that was not on last year's books, FYI. And um, just a little reminder, tickets are on sale. Go to thescarefest.com, click the Ticket Center link, and it will take you to our ticketing platform for 2021. Um, And that's about all the bullshit I got, so I'm going to get right on over to Sean. Um... Still no damn westerns, Sean. Still no damn westerns. Well, someone corrected me actually and said that the Ang Lee um, movie "Ride with the Devil," which had Tobey Maguire and Skeet Ulrich and Jewel in it, was about the Western South, and I was in that. But then I got cut out, but I did shoot it, <laughs> but it didn't make it into the film. So it's it's murder. No, if, if I can't did I, if I can't go on, on Amazon and watch the damn thing, it doesn't exist. That's my feelings okay. about it. Right. Uh, That's fair. Uh, That's fair. The um Yeah, I wanna you know, uh, down and dirty, you know, the with the main street and you know, with the bar and the whole thing. You know what I mean? That's that's what I want to see. Um, now I did, I, I did, everybody, I don't, for people that watched the show a year ago, the amount of research now that I actually put into the show is amazing compared to back then, because I actually, I've, I, it's because of COVID. I have time to sit and watch TV now. Uh, yeah. But, uh, but now character actors like you freaking kill me, Sean, you're in a, you're in 200 movies. And a lot of them, you've got one big scene. They're almost always pivotal scenes. But um, yeah. it, 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 uh, one of my favorites, uh, actually, I look, because I love the character, I didn't love the movie, but um, um, all superheroes must die. We talked about it a little bit ahead of time, but I loved seeing you as a supervillain. Yes. Yeah, it was fun. That was really fun. Uh the Sarah Trost, who did the costumes for that movie, just came up with the coolest, coolest look. I'm a evil Uncle Sam with a flamethrower. <laughs> and I'll and I'll tell you what, like, uh, talk about, you know, little boys playing with their toys. There's nothing funner than a flamethrower. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, it's hot though. I mean, it really is hot. Uh, but you're kind of like. Oh man, I wish there was, you know, I wish there was an old building that the fire department said, you know, you could pay 50 bucks to like you burn a section with the flamethrower and man, I would do that in a second. Well, I'm, I'm kind of shocked on on uh, on a 
on the set that I saw that they couldn't fa have found you something. One more question before I toss it over to Chad, and that's because this has come up yes, sir. twice in Facebook, and I honestly know nothing about the movie, um, but because this person is a movie geek and keeps bringing it up, tell me about Tammy and the T-Rex. So Tammy and the T-Rex, so there was a director who did a movie called Mac and Me, which basically was born of when the whole Reese's uh, Pieces slash M&M's thing in E.T., mm -hmm. right? You, do you guys know that story, the famous oh, story yeah. that uh, M&M's M &M's didn't want to do it? They didn't think it was you know going to make any money. Reese's Pieces jumped in. Their sales went through the roof. So uh, as a B knockoff, they did a movie called Mac and Me, sponsored by McDonald's, <laughs> Coke, uh, gosh, who else? Sears. Uh, Wix, um, and and it was like a B E T, and this guy it was basically just an advertisement for all these products with the same kind of storyline as E T, but a cheaper version. So this guy be, got his name like that, and he wanted to do other kitschy stuff, and he wrote this movie called Tammy and the Teenage T Rex, and it had a young Paul Walker, and uh, what's Charlie Sheen's ex wife? Uh, Christine, uh, uh, oh, Denise Richards, Denise Richards, sorry. Uh, so, and her first movie too. And I got it, and I remember that we were supposed to go to Hawaii with my in laws, uh, which it was okay that I didn't go. Uh, <laughs> but uh, uh, we, uh, I, so I shot that week, and you know, young Paul Walker, young Denise Richards, the nicest in the world, but it's a very campy movie about a scientist who takes a teenage boy brain uh, from this young couple that was in love, Dean, Den Denise Richards and, and Paul Walker, and put the brain of him into the T-Rex. And so she's basically in love with the T-Rex. And, and, and wackiness ensues. <laughs> it sounds adorable. Chad, over to you. Sean, it's great to talk to you. And I appreciate you coming on tonight. I want to talk about the fact that you have to have the most diverse resume of pretty much any actor I've ever seen or talked to. Um, how do you choose your roles and how do you prepare for them? Because it's got to be quite different to prepare for laid to rest and, uh, and and a Disney Channel show that you may be on? Well, I think it's it all comes from my training. Um, I, I, I first start, I love comedy. Comedy's my go-to. Uh, that, that, if I had a choice, if everyone goes, what's your dream role? And I said, a, a series regular on a sitcom would be a blast. You know? Um, I was in the running or close to being in the office uh, Rain Wilson ended up getting the role, but I was in the mix of that role. You know, I would have loved that. Um, so I trained at the Groundlings, and then I trained at Playhouse West, which was uh, a gentleman called Bob Carnegie and uh, Jeff Goldblum taught there. There was their co-school. So I had comedy training, and then I had um, then I had uh, dramatic training, and then I had a coach. To merge all that together so I'd get an audition so you don't really choose listen the only people who choose their roles are very very uh, high established people you know we, we just get auditions and so my first job was doing um, was doing a comedic guest star on uh, uh, Ferris Bueller's Day Off the series and my first comedy scene ever on television was with Cloris Leachman. Wow. Yeah, she played the grandmother on that show, and me and her had a big old scene back and forth, and it's like a comedy, you know, it was amazing. I was such a huge young Frankenstein, or at rest in peace, obviously. Um, I actually posted that story on Facebook. And then my had a few auditions, and then the next one I booked, three weeks later, was People Under the Stairs. But... I remember getting in and thinking, you know, I crawl around the ground and scream and stuff like that and crawl through the walls. And my coach said, no, there's there's more to him than that. And, you know, 
because I was young, and now I know that. But we worked on we worked on those characters, and uh, brought the humanity and depth to him. And you know, so people say, "How did you get into horror?" Well, that was the audition that came across the desk that day. You know, so you have to kind of be ready for anything. You don't know. Like I just said, that I love comedy most, but I'd say sixty percent of what I did is dramatic. So. I would much rather have that more flipped, but that's okay. I thank God I can do drama and that I like doing drama. It's not like I dislike doing drama. It's just that I have, you know. Um, so the only way you choose your roles is if you kind of create it yourself. And so I'm working on my own horror comedy. Uh, but, and and if I, you know, want to do a short or something like that, for the most part, the the we just get, the opportunity to do them the only choice we have is to say you know what i don't really want to you know i it's either the money's i it's not it's not i i'll lose money by leaving my house to do it you know what i mean after everything uh or or you just really hate the material but that's ne that's happened to me i think twice in my 33 years and 32 years of doing this twice i think that i was like Ugh, i'm not gonna do that because um, I'm kind of game for anything. And so uh, the, the, it's the synergy of the part, the right role coming in for you, you know. But nowadays you might get a role that says, you know, 30s to 50s, all ethnicities, all genders. You know what I mean? So they literally don't know what they want. And yeah. you bring what you want, you know. That's the famous like Kramer from Seinfeld. They, they didn't, they kind of had an idea, but it's Michael Richards who brought that to them, you know? So the choices we have are the choices we make in our auditions. And it's just like I always use for my acting students, I was like, uh, like a box of cereal, you know? Someone goes, I want cereal. Well, when you go to the cereal aisle, there's millions, but they're all good and they're all usable and they're all could be, but you might want healthy one day or you might want sugary that day, you know? And so it's all that synergy of coming together and and then doing it. So, you know, if uh, I wish I had huge roles in all the movies I did, but, you know, I don't get to choose that, you know? So oh. the only thing you can do to control your roles, like I said, is create your own content, and that's what I'm working on. Well, you you certainly bring something to every role you're in. I've Thank I've you. seen many of, of your uh, of your performances and and it's always different it's always nuanced even if it's some quirky character it's very nuanced and you bring yeah. something to it so it's great to watch how did you decide you talked about your background with the groundlings and stuff how did you decide yeah. that was the path for you to move into uh preparing for show business um i think for me i just i again i liked comedy so much that i was working I, I got in, I got into UCLA theater department, and I did a drama like my freshman year. It just it just was like a little building way back in the end of UCLA. I was from the East Coast. I was so excited to be in Southern California. I didn't want to spend my time like building sets in a little building in the back of that. And plus, when I did my role, my dramatic role, which I got it because I looked young. Literally, the part was of a 15-year-old kid. The guy was up against looked like he could have four kids. So unless unless I couldn't speak or just vomited constantly, I'm going to get the role because I looked younger, you know? Uh, and I got some flack from some students about like, oh, freshmen don't get roles. And, uh, and I thought, oh, I don't, I'm not ready for this. And I got a lot of attention from that that I think I just wasn't, it was too overwhelming. So I took those years and, and just... Uh, Finished college, had a great time, and then I was working uh, at the medical center, and my bosses used to talk about they went to the groundlings all the time. And I, uh, I, did, I said, it sounds amazing. So I went, and I saw a couple shows, and I thought, oh, this, this looks like a blast. And I ended up trying out for the, the school. I got in. Um, they said, "All right, here's the money. You can start next week." And I went, "Oh, I'm, I'm, I don't have enough money. I was working at a restaurant, but was only doing like the cashier." And I said, "All right, I'm going to defer for 
three months. I got in in September. I said, oh, or four months, I'll, I'll come in January. And I just busted my butt at that restaurant day and night to move up so I could be a waiter. So by the time I became a waiter, then I'd have enough money. And I still, you know, the, I took the bus and walked to my job and took the bus all the way across Los Angeles to get to the school. And, you know, I uh, didn't, couldn't afford a car and the whole, you know, starving artist thing. Um, and so I just loved that. And then I think I would have continued, but it, uh, I, I needed, I needed to, I was really good at improv. I was really good at sketch comedy. And, but I just wasn't good at auditioning or like acting, like getting a script and doing it. So that's why I decided to go to Playhouse West. That's why I decided to get a coach and, uh, figured I just needed to flesh out the other side. Cause I was, you know, a little too limited because I was, killing it in the shows and then i remember casting director brought me in and i my audition was she goes you're you know you don't know what you're doing <laughs> you're not. she goes you're so good in the show you can't you got to be able to bring that into a casting office and i went oh i need yeah i need to you know flesh out my skills so i'm thrilled so now i now i'm ready for anything that comes i think that's why because i really studied comedy and i really studied drama and 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 then it just takes time, you know, life certainly, experience and, you know. It certainly appears to have paid off because, like I said, you're great in everything I've seen you in. But right oh. now we're going to take a quick break. We'll be right at right back after this. Before we hop to commercial, oh. we have one thing. Sean is going to be uh, signing at the end of the show uh, some of his uh, uh, pictures and posters. He, um, yeah, so let me get that. I'm gonna yep. get that link up on the screen and then I'll even explain to everybody how to type it into their browser. Mm -hmm. But it is link, it's gonna be signing these live. There you go. There you go. Roach, couple roach pictures and a couple and one twister picture. I can sign them live. You can watch me sign them and get a screenshot and the whole thing. So the way to work, people, if you'll go to the link that's on the screen right now, and that is basically if you type out link tree and then put the dot before the E's and after the R, Sean Whalen Actor. You cannot actually pronounce that. It's link tree. Yeah, link tree. <laughs> But they just say that. But anyway, it's a real handy little thing. But yeah, everybody type in Linktree slash Sean Whalen Acker and then put your dot before the two E's that are together. Uh, that'll take you to his little menu there and you can uh, choose which one of your pictures. He'll get an email on his phone and um, and he'll sign them at the end of the show. That's technology. Technology is just a grand thing. Everybody, we'll be back with more Scarefest TV in just a minute. Mama Ruby offers fun vendor-based events that focus primarily on the metaphysical and spiritual aspects of our lives. Well, 2020 didn't go as planned, to say the least. Since Mama Ruby's can't bring the vendors to you in person, they still encourage you to support them online. Links to these and other outstanding artists, craftspeople, vendors, and psychics, visit MamaRubies.com and click shop. Come visit the Universal Energy Expo, May 1st and 2nd at the Northern Kentucky Convention Center. Meet special guests, Shaman Coyote Chris Sutton and Psychic Southern Gypsies. Over 100 readers, healers, and vendors. Admission also includes door prizes, workshops, and all seminars. The Universal Energy Expo. Come curious. Leave enlightened. Here. 
Beerfest fan favorite Bruce Campbell returned to horror movie history this week with the release of Army of Darkness back in 1993. In this third installment in the Evil Dead series, our hero Ash Williams is sent back to the year 1300 AD, and through his adventure back in time, he discovers he must retrieve the Necronomicon to rid the world of the Army of the Dead and use the book to return home. With the first two Evil Dead films already having a solid cult following, Army of Darkness quickly followed in their footsteps and became seen as many as the best of the trilogy. Horror icon, director Sam Raimi delivers the perfect mix of comedy and horror, and Ash Williams, along with his boomstick, will go down in horror history as one of the greats. And welcome back, everybody, to Scarefest TV. Our special guest tonight is Mr. Sean Wanglin. Okay, Sean, now first of all, you've been... You, are, you, 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 you about halfway made me feel bad because you've been bragging on Facebook about how busy you were during COVID when the rest of us were sitting around on the couch uh, gaming. We were in a leather business that sells belts, and our, re okay. our returns jumped up about 75% from normal because nobody bought pants last year and realized they had gained 20 pounds. <laughs> I know that's what it was. So, uh, tell us a story. Well, I just went into... Go ahead. What's up? I, was, I, I want to know well, how I, you kept busy. I went, well, I just went into my costume fitting, uh, and, and I know... Listen, I know... The number one job I teach my students, the same thing. I said, I go, you make everybody's job on a set easy, easier. They want You want them to go to the producer and go, oh, man, he was a dream to work with. That's how we get work, you know? It used to be your reputation was about 30%. I think now it's probably 60 70% uh, over talent. And they just assume you have talent. But you better be easy to work with because it's hard to work, you know? And especially now, they mm -hmm. want someone who's professional. And so I went in there, and uh, I my suit size got bigger. Uh, and, the poor, you know, they pulled all the, you know, so they're trying to get me in there once because I have to take a couple tests before I even go see them. And so they don't want to bring me back. Of course, I get it. Uh, and they were putting me in all the wrong size suits, too small. And I was like, oh, no. But luckily, the costume lady said, you know what? Let's just grab one size up just in case. And so they put me in that one, and they said, okay, that's good. But, yeah, she said, you have no idea how many actors are not the size they thought they were after COVID, <laughs> either smaller or bigger. Now, I haven't met too many smaller people. I mean, I guess there's a few of them, but with the gyms closed and everything. <laughs> to me, I know one guy, I'm not going to name your name, Brandon Griffith. I've not seen him in pants for the last 12 months. Pajamas. I've seen, Every time yeah. I've seen him, he's been wearing pajama pants. So anyway, uh, yeah. so what did you do to spend your time during COVID? Well, what I, what, what I did was... Uh, uh, I right before I my daughters were watching TikTok, and I thought, oh, that looks that looks fun, you know, that looks like a fun app. What I loved about it is, you know, you always hear like, oh, that guy's funny, you know, that guy's really funny, and you don't know the guy, and you're thinking, eh, okay, but what you're seeing is America's point of view on tons of different things. For example, they had the, the trend that was Phil Collins, you know, drum thing from In the Air Tonight going, do, 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 do. And it would always be a wife or a husband going into the kitchen, seeing all the cabinet doors open, and they were going, do, 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 do. You know, just silly, you know, funny cat videos, um, really informative stuff. Some people were on there giving information. So I loved it. So I thought, oh, I'm going to just do fun little skits. I love writing comedy, right? So I started to do skits. It, it, it lasted. I asked three, maybe four videos before people started going, wait, aren't you that guy from <laughs> da, da 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 Are you Steve Buscemi? Are you in Twister? Are you in, P you know? And I was kind of trying to like, oh, sure, sure, sure. And I was trying to avoid it and just do, oh, I just want to do funny skits. 
And then I finally went, all right. And so I started doing videos to go on these. No, I'm not Bobby Brady. Yes, I am in People Under the Stairs. No, I'm not Steve Buscemi. But yes, I did the Aaron Burr Milk commercial. And, you know, I started to do videos like that. And then people would ask questions and you can do videos reacting to their questions. And so that's what started to build me up was people recognizing me from all these films, you know? And so then I just started talking about movies. And then I did a whole like sitcom thing about Roach the roommate. What would Roach be like if he was still uh, I watched that today? Uh, <laughs> did you yes. watch Roach the roommate? Very silly, right? Uh, Very silly. Yeah, 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 it got a little dirty at the end with the whole, you know, <laughs> the whole going on a date thing. But it, yeah, no, it, it, was, it, it was. It was. It was. It was a good take on. Yeah, yeah. I. It, it. Everybody, go on YouTube. Look for Sean and type well, in that's actor. The first four. Yeah. <laughs> and if, if that's the first four, but on TikTok, I went up to like 12 or so, you know? Uh, you got, there's a whole thing about him becoming a DJ, and we did the rise and fall of Roach the DJ. And, you know, so I did that. I also did these 40s characters that I did in Groundlings. I did those. Um, uh, you get to duet people. So these people would put out funny skits, and you could just add the lines. I did acting challenges where I would say the lines and someone would have to do at me, meaning they could do a video response thing and do the, I just, I was doing that all day, every day. And I got 200, almost 200,000 followers. So that was great. And then every once in a while I would do a live event, signing some stuff. And, and I made, you know, like kind of like this. Um, and that would do really well too. So I just kind of stayed busy that way, you know? Um, tell you what, let's go on and go to commercial break. When we come back, uh, we'll do our announcement and then I'll toss it over to Chad. Um, so we'll, we'll, we'll get him his time in, but everybody you're watching Scarefest TV. Our guest night is Sean Whalen. We'll be right back after these messages. Horror. Movie. Fan. Four. Life. On Facebook. Find us. Four watch parties. Four news. Four memes. Four friends. Four life. Horror movie fans for life. Join us. Everyone is talking about CBD oil. Most of us know that CBD is a cannabis compound that has significant medical benefits, but does not make people high. Its benefits include pain relief, anti-seizure properties, anxiety relief, fights cancer, reduces the risk of diabetes, and it is even used as a sleep aid. Blue Leaf Naturals CBD and hemp products are full spectrum hemp extract oils. They use only hemp grown in Kentucky, supporting Kentucky farmers and businesses and helping you and your family stay healthy and well. Blue Leaf Naturals, created with care from seed to shelf. Visit their website at blueleafnaturals.com. Blue Leaf Naturals, a Kentucky proud company. Hey, Scarefest fans. There's a lot of light coming into this room. There's a lot of snow outside. I'm actually doing one of these in the middle of the day. Once again, I've moved things around here. This is Joe Lewis of Bonehead Weekly, and I've got another review for you. And yeah, for some odd reason, I picked the hat for the show you're already watching, but I kind of like the hat. This week is about a movie called The Mortuary Collection. You heard me. The Mortuary Collection. 
written and directed by a guy named Ryan Spindell. And apparently he worked on this movie off and on when he had money for three or four years. Stars Tristan Byan, Eden Campbell, Hannah Lloyd. I know. I don't know any of them either. That's okay. The main star of the piece is Clancy Brown. Now, if you don't know who Clancy Brown is, well, Clancy Brown is one of the best character actors of all time. Have you ever seen Starship Troopers? If you... The hand, knife, I was going to do the line, but I can't do Clancy Brown justice. You ever see the Highlander? He's the villain. Do you ever see a little movie called The Shawshank Redemption? About to throw Andy Dufresne off the building? That's Clancy Brown. Big fan of SpongeBob? He's the voice of Mr. Krabs. I have always dreamed of interviewing Clancy Brown. Never had the chance to do that yet, but he's kind of a private dude. He plays the mortician or the man over the mortuary. And this lady comes in asking for a job. And he proceeds to tell her different stories of how different people died. This movie is a low budget film. It's a Shudder exclusive if you've got Shudder. I liked it because it doesn't always look low budget. I actually think the effects in this look great. It's shot sp- superbly. It, is, it looks cinematic. This movie looks great. The issue is, is there's about one story too many, and the movie's almost two hours. Man, if you're The Exorcist, you can do two hours. But most horror films should never be more than 90 minutes. It's a long time to sustain sustain the bullshit the horror movies feed you that you need to believe to stay in the story. That's a long time. I like the movie, though. It sounds like I didn't like it. I'm very impressed of how well this movie was shot. I like Clancy Brown in it. I liked all that. There's no bad acting in it. I did a movie a couple of weeks ago or last week. I told you about low-budget film. Bad acting. This, that, there's not a bad performance in this film. It's just a little too long. Actually, it's about 20 or 30 minutes too long. Like I said, two hours. The rest of it, it looks great. The acting is great. Some of the stories, yeah. I mean, it's an anthology. I like anthology films. Some of the stories may be a little rare, but it's a fun movie. If you have Shudder, I highly recommend checking out the Mortuary Collection, right? It says that it took two and a half hours every day to put Clancy Brown's makeup on, and it probably did. But with all that at work and effort, why do I still see his skull cap? to make him look bald if you look up the user reviews for it on imdb it says it takes its time as well it does i enjoyed this movie i recommend it it's on shutter so check out ryan spindell's movie the mortuary collection this has been joe lewis of bonehead weekly thank you so much And our celebrity announcement for Scarefest 2020, Scarefest 13, Scarefest XIII that I don't use because I think it's too many damn slashes. Felissa Rose is coming back to Scarefest. Felissa Rose, you know her from uh, Sleepaway Camp. Uh, shit. Honestly, if you watch horror movies and you don't see her, you're 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 looking away from the TV. That's all I'm going to say. Yeah. Um. So next up. Now, uh, next week, okay, that's our celebrity announcement. Um, Next week, I have Tony Todd coming on the show. Tony Todd of uh, Candy Man himself. You know who Tony Todd is, but he'll be doing Scarefest television next week. After him, we have our after party. The after party is Holly McCulloch. She will be doing a... uh, a, um, Psychic Gallery, Psychic Gallery for us to our uh, Patreon. So that's uh, patreon.com slash Scarefest Radio. Join and you can be, uh, that's our third, that's three after parties this month. So I'm, I'm flying. And then don't forget, uh, we are, tickets are on sale. Thescarefest.com, click ticket center and you will be able to buy your tickets for Scarefest 13. Speaker applications will be taken through, I think it's May. I think that's right. Anyway, but they are taking speaker applications. If you're interested in doing a seminar or a speech or a slideshow or some silliness like that, speaker applications go to thescarefest.com. And finally, let's tell you about our gift shop. We've got Scarefest Radio merch. We've got Scarefest 2020, the Lost Year merch. These are collector items, people. We ain't going to reprint this crap. Um... That's it. 
those 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 we we get just gotta have enough to uh, uh we had some people we promised t-shirts to but what i got is pretty much all there's gonna be sweatshirts t-shirts um i don't think we did hats for that but also now covid mask we have scarefest covid mask so get over to scarefestradio.com click the gift shop link and there you go chad over to you hey sean um First, let me give you a chance to give your website again for anybody that may want to get a, get an autograph. Yeah, I'm going to have a, a signing live at the after party here. Like, got a, a roach, a couple of roach pictures and a twister picture. And you just go to uh, Linktree, uh, but you put a dot after the R. So it's L I N K T R dot E E slash. Sean Whalen actor. It's up there on the screen. Um, and, and I will get an email uh, showing that you ordered something and I'll be able to sign it live in front of you. You'll see me sign it. You could just turn on your, you know, camera or, or screenshot and get a screenshot of me holding it up. I'll hold it up next to myself so you see that I've signed it officially and then we'll mail it out. Okay, everybody, get on that while we're talking and uh, make sure you don't miss out. Um, Sean, you were talking a little bit about uh, some projects you have coming up and some of the uh, criteria you have to jump through to participate. I thought yeah. maybe we'd talk a little about that. I'm sure everybody's interested in about how filming's working right now. Well, they, you know, it, it, they're being very, very, I just think it's because of the number of people. They had to really reorganize because a set is just so many departments you know you have an art department a camera department a grip department a you know construction department painting you know so many different departments studios tons of different crafts and craftsmen um so they're just taking uh the testing very seriously you do pcr tests beforehand also day of rapid tests to double confirm it before you get on the set year we had to go through a whole training seminar about you know social distancing and how it's going to work and if you have an issue and and how you have to wash your hands how we're going to get the food we all used to have put our hands in the you know snack tables and all that stuff all that's changed you know you, you get handed individual things so uh they're just being very very careful um which like i said my 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 uh, fiance is immunocompromised, and so I'm very happy. Uh, she's got asthma, so I'm, I'm, I need to be very careful. So it's nice to know that you're going to be in an environment that is taking it very seriously. So, uh, oh, yeah, and so I had for two guest stars on two different shows with the costume fittings and the testing that's required for those. And I'm getting, I have six COVID tests, six PCR tests, and three rapid tests. One I had before the one costume fitting, and then two right before I work next week as well. But yeah, so I have a lot. I have a lot of tests. But it's great. great. At least you know you're walking in when you're, I mean, it's a little anxiety producing after being not around a lot of people to all of us being surrounded by a lot of people that at least you know that everybody's pretty much tested and safe and they're doing their best, you know? It's great to hear they're figuring it out, though, because... It's a, it's a terrible time not to be producing new entertainment because yeah. everybody's at home watching entertainment. So yeah, yeah, it's glad to hear they're doing it and they're doing it safely because everybody needs to be protected. But um, it's product that's in high demand, so I'm I'm yeah. sure everybody's happy to be out there producing again. Yeah, yeah, it is. It's it's nice. It's nice. It's it, I think it's, it's going to be worth it in the long run. So great. Let me toss it back over to Wes. Um, whoops. Uh, we, we, <laughs> uh, oh, let's, let's, um, okay. I got a check. There we go. We're getting there. We're getting there. We're getting there. Okay. <laughs> it's the Sean. Shuffle. I can edit that in post if, if I want to. Um, anyway, if you but then that takes all the charm out of it. I was going now <laughs> get to follow that up with are any of the test anal swabs. Um, so, uh, no, okay. You have to pay extra for those. <laughs> yeah. Well, here's a funny joke. Here's a funny joke. I was telling people on Facebook, I'm so excited. You know, I'm going to be working. 
And uh, I got six regular tests. I got three rabbits, and I put rabid tests <laughs> instead of rapid. You know, you make a joke like that, and then, you, I mean, you make a mistake like that, and all the comments yeah. are like, you know, uh, did you get bit? You know, when did, when did you start foaming at the mouth? And, you know. <laughs> and and the sh- and, and well actually they're not as bad as they used to be i've had uh, uh, rabies shots and um they're, they're not in the stomach anymore they're in the ass there and they could go ahead and do this while while they're there anyway there um go. now <laughs> now back, back to the show uh my wife loves hearing all about your love life that all is rooted in scarefest Yes, it was. Well, we, my fiance and I met, we were still married. Um, we met at a Gettysburg convention. Um, she was with what I thought was her girlfriend, uh, meaning uh, intimate girlfriend, romantic girlfriend, because she, her girlfriend was dressed like a man. They were um, playing a game called who do we think is gay at the convention? Um, I remember seeing that on Facebook and they were at the pride parade down in Pittsburgh, but they had a friend, they go, you know, so I go, Oh, they're, they're a couple. No big deal. They're a couple, but man, they're, she's, she's fun. And, uh, you know, we became just, just, she followed me on Facebook and that kind of was it. Well, I didn't even know she, she was actually married at the time. We just met, nothing happened. We're completely innocent. Uh, just, kind of became friendly and then uh two years later they decided she was in western pa drove down from pittsburgh uh to go to lexington and go to the convention and i had gotten divorced and for some reason i don't know i don't i remember she came to my table well first of all my number one rule she wasn't there to see me she was not a fan that drove down to see me because i don't think that would have been a deal killer because I don't, I, well, I wouldn't do that. Uh, I know some people who married their fans, actually, but not me. So uh, I uh, saw her, and I jumped up, ran across the table, and I go, guess, and I go, hey. And she's like, oh, hey. And I go, I'm divorced. <laughs> and she goes, okay. <laughs> I mean, what am I, I'm sorry? Or <laughs> that is one of those awkward <laughs> things to, say, to have to respond to. <laughs> Congratulations! Uh, I'm sure. I'm sure your wife knows feels what a hot pickup line that is. Uh, so <laughs> I. Uh, uh, so then I. Uh, she just kind of looked at me, and then she was walking away. And her friend said, "He's obviously kind of into you." And she was like, "Really? No, I don't think so." So I was there. Scott DJ Trey, as we all know and love. Uh, uh, was there and he's like you know you I know you got out of a marriage and it's time to have some fun we're gonna meet some women I'm gonna be your wingman blah 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 and so we were getting ready to go to the parties and, and meet some ladies and dance and the whole thing and uh, I saw her there again and just and I was talking to another one that Scott was trying to hook me up with and I saw her walk in my fiance and I just went I I just have to, and I ran over to her and I just said, is she your girlfriend? Is she your girlfriend or not? And she goes, no, that's my best friend. And, oh no, that's what I said before I said the divorce. I said, oh, you guys are still together. And she goes, yeah, yeah, we're <laughs> friends, yeah. And I was like, oh, okay. But I ran up and I go, is she your girlfriend, girlfriend? Or she? And she goes, no, she's just my friend. And I went, oh, great. And we both got big smiles on our faces and we started dancing that night and uh, had a great weekend together and literally had talked every day since that day. And that was September 12th, uh, 2014. So, uh, and we talked together and she lived in Pittsburgh and we did long distance for two years. And... um, then she moved out to L.A., got a job within a few weeks, and we've been living together. And we just got engaged January 9th. So, and that's all. And, and she's come with me when I got back to Scarefest. <laughs> I would come every other year to Scarefest, and she'd come with me there. I and... wouldn't turn you loose. I mean, that's uh, the... Uh... <laughs> 
It actually it reminded me of the, of the old joke. Uh, guy meet, sees an old friend and he asks him how his wife is doing. He said, oh, I, she passed away, but I remarried. And congratulations. You know. <laughs> uh, so, yeah. Right. Uh, <laughs> it's yeah, it's another so, crude oh, comment to make about that, but anyway. Uh, well, I was so I was gonna try to do an engagement whole thing at Scarefest and bring her family down and have them wear monster masks while holding up signs. Will you, you know? And uh, because everything that went down and we kind of I had a friend pass away last year and I thought I just don't want to wait anymore. I, I just want to ask her to marry me ASAP. And uh, we we had a nice little special one where I made a movie for us and things like that. But uh, when I she said, "Well, what were you going to do?" and I told her, and she goes, "Oh, I'm so glad you didn't do that." She goes, "That would have cost a ton of money flying all these people in, and you know right, what I mean." Right. And then, uh, she was, so, but but she loves the idea of us celebrating somehow at Scarefest. So so, so I, we'll do we'll do some. Our wedding is not going to be there. I'm so sorry. We're just doing a tiny one. At a house out. In well, that's what I'm going to ask you. How close are you to making it official now? Uh, we'll probably do fall okay. this year. Like we met in September, we're going to try to keep it near when we met when you guys used to have them in September. So we're going to try to keep somewhere around our September 12th uh, date around there. Somewhere. So, so so you got you got to go through with this because so far so far, me personally, I'm responsible for like two divorces. And uh, nope. yeah, and and uh, so I I, I, I want to feel at least tangently involved in a wedding. Okay, I just I just yeah. want that. Yeah, you got it. You got it. Your this, your scales are a yeah. little off. I'm gonna help you. I I do appreciate that. Everybody, we're gonna take a commercial break. Hey, this would be a good chance for you to go to Link Tree with a dot in the wrong place slash Sean Whalen actor and uh, pick out some merchandise. And somebody in the chat room said they've already bought something. So we'll see you in a minute. We'll be right back. All right. Spirit Mechanics is here to help. Their background includes many different specialties across the metaphysical spectrum, including alchemy, shamanism, Celtic witchcraft, angelic magic, astral travel, and more. With over 30 years combined experience in the group, you can be confident in their ability to help. If there is a question you have that you cannot answer, they will do their best to assist you. Metaphysics can be intimidating, confusing, and unfortunately, abused. Spirit Mechanics takes pride in being selfless in the pursuit of helping others, being humble and honest with their clients about their questions, and lastly maintaining a professional and personable atmosphere. They want you to feel as you are coming to a close friend and they will do everything in their power to make you comfortable and safe. Rare tarot and oracle decks for the discerning enthusiast or collector. Our decks are not for everyone. If you are a rare deck collector, art collector, or simply fall in love with a deck, then we might be for you. Right now, get 10% off your first order just for subscribing to their newsletter. Shipping is just $5.99 in the United States. Tell me tarot.com. Jason Voorhees. You think of hockey mask, machetes, hot sauce. Yes, Jason has a hot sauce. Actually, Ari Lehman, who played young Jason in the original Friday the 13th, has partnered with Gemini Crow Sauce Makers to produce a line of killer hot sauces. 
First, Jason's Heat My Warning sauce is the latest addition to the line. It will murder your taste buds. And welcome back, everybody, to Scarefest TV. Now, we're at the end of the interview part, but we will, if uh, anytime Sean wants to check his email, uh, if we've uh, sold anything, he w we can get that done. Um, I did want to ask you, Sean. Yes, because sir. I, 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 based on an earlier question, I don't think you took the projects. You said you only came across a couple that you hated the material. Yeah, there was one... The only one I really remember was it was it required uh, some nudity, uh, you know, like my bare butt or something like. Which again, I wouldn't really care if it was, but it was such a kind of a tra It was it it was trashy without being clever enough, and the nudity wasn't important, and the way it was treat. You know, it wasn't like treat you know is treating women bad and then it was really like a lot of uh like gross humor but not i mean not even funny you know what i mean like there's david cronenberg is you know the fly is gross if you think about it, you know what i mean but that's it's well done it's well you know there's a reason to it and stuff but this was just i just remember it was like oh this just it's there's nothing clever about it it's just somebody felt like they were like let's put you know, boobies, barf, blood, and no story or creativity up on the screen. I'm sure, you know, and I was like, well, I'm, not, I'm not really interested in that. Now you know what you it's like to be an actress. Facebook page. <laughs> What's that? I said, I think you just described Wes's Facebook page. But, <laughs> and then he, he had a question. <laughs> The uh, the only uh, from the chat room and this is actually I already know. okay to find Sean now on Facebook, I, uh, do you have to type in Sean Whalen actor or yeah okay. it's Sean Whalen actor and it's a page it's a page don't friend me on my you know I'm I'm actually I have a friend page that's too full I can't get it anymore so I have my Sean Whalen actor page my business page. yes because because we all know how I, important I, it is for Facebook to limit our friendships. Yeah, <laughs> right. Yeah, it's such a weird, such a weird thing. So, I mean, listen, I'm mostly pushing, honestly, Instagram and TikTok because I just do uh, TikTok. I love the most because I get, again, I get to be creative. If I think of something fun or funny, you know, I get to shoot a video. You know, I'm there. I don't have a face for Instagram, <laughs> or. But I, I I like to have fun a lot, and so I, I I get to do more, be more silly, and have more fun stuff, and and I tell more stories uh, uh, stories about that I've been working on for since August, the 35 nicest celebrities I've worked with, and I've been counting down, telling all the stories, and you know that's been one. I just did one about Dennis Franz the other night. You know he was incredibly kind. It was shocking how nice he was. Um, and so that's that's really fun. I just have I just have fun with filming and it's you know teaching me directing and editing and things like that, you know. So All right, um so uh, did did the sale come through on your end? Uh let me start looking. Um I got to escape my uh, uh okay. Let's do that. Uh, let me see. There we go. Let's see what we got here. I turned off my my mail so it wouldn't make a bunch of dings <laughs> during our TV. Let's see what I got. Oh, I pulled up the wrong one. Anything? Yeah, I got one. Well, yeah. there you go. We got one. Um, here we go. And uh, this is. I want to point out how ironic it is. You busted my chops last time you were on the show because I thought that the guy that does the uh, commercials with Flow, the insurance commercials, I just yeah, made Jamie. the comment that 
wow, they're Sean Whalen, and I realized very quickly it wasn't. But then you do a whole video about how everybody mistakes you for a, 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 a shoot. Steve, Steve Deshemi. Yeah, Steve Deshemi. Yeah, yeah. So I feel I feel uh, vindicated. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I, I, you know, I get that. I get Bobby Brady, Mike Lookinland. I guess he, I was kind of like, well, do I look like Bobby Brady? I never thought so. But when you see the way he looks now, I was like, oh, okay, I get it. You know? Mm-hmm. I get it. He 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 and I look similar in the, our age now, but I certainly didn't look like him when I was young. Not even close. So, do you want me to get to this photo? Yeah, sure. We're at the top of the hour. We're uh, we've we've used up our time. So, here we go. Now, everybody, he's he's still online. If you buy something right now. Uh, the, the, I was going to only sign those other ones, but you know what? Now I have to dig through my other ones to find what I'm looking for, but I think I can find it relatively quickly. Um, this is, excuse me, a little, little, little accent there. Uh, this is a shout out to, uh, it's a shout out to Kelly Rigg. Kelly Riggs bought a never been kissed photo. Uh, oh no, wait a second. No, she wasn't never been kissed. She wanted friends. <laughs> Whoops, sorry about that. Now, see, I'm digging through all my stuff again. That's all right. Because uh, I was only going to do those few, but you know what? We'll, we'll be flexible. She said friends. Sorry. I just have to find it in all these photos here. There it is. There you go. This is for Kelly Riggs. And she wanted it signed to Kelly. So let me do that for her. Get a little shot so she can see what I'm doing. Okay. Uh, two. Kelly, and there's a line from the show. Bonehead, bonehead. That's what I say in there. So, and then Sean Whalen. There you go. There you go. A special there. moment. It's just like being there. Just like being there. There you go. Thank you, Kelly. Appreciate your support. That will be mailed out. Next couple days. All right. Well, uh, only other question I got, Sean. Uh, have you booked any conventions yes, for 2021? Uh, right now, there was a um, – someone was talking to me about something in July. Uh, but that's – we just started chatting about that. Um, but now, as of right now, there is – well, there was one – they're supposed to be in San Antonio this weekend. So, <laughs> obviously, that was canceled. So I, I hadn't heard it, I hadn't uh, heard that, heard it was that, canceled. Um, I know the one you're talking about. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And that was canceled, like, last month, I think. Hmm. So, uh, but, but, you know, even if it was on, it wouldn't have been on anyway. So, with the snow and everything. So... <laughs> Uh, but that, yeah, that's kind of it so far. Okay. Uh, but I, you know, I'm sure things will open up. Hopefully, like I said, they're 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 saying that uh, the projections are that most people that will are willing to get the vaccine or can take the vaccine. Yeah. Midsummer. Yep. And uh, so that's pretty much July is my stepping off point. I'm going to go ahead and try to get uh, get to some conventions in in that. T- time frame to hand out business cards yeah. and, and, and do my little yeah. spiel but uh so everybody once again uh and now if you if you missed the link go back watch the episode again uh link tree with the dot in the wrong place slash sean whalen actor uh go to his facebook page uh um, sean whalen actor follow him on facebook keep up with him and sean it's yeah, been instagram and tiktok they're all sean whalen actor 
See, I don't do TikTok much. Now, Instagram, I'm starting to do. I'll look you up on Instagram. I can... I, I'm telling you, TikTok is the funnest app because here's what I love about it. You don't have to, you don't see anyone you know, so that's great. <laughs> that's right? what the whole internet used uh, to be. <laughs> yeah, and then I like that, that you get to really kind of craft what you want to see. If you want to see, you know, a bunch of people who cook, you know, you can see recipes, you can do that. You can see cat videos, you can just see comedy stuff. You can see, uh, you know, you can craft it however you want to see it. And then, you know, just by choosing what you like. And then you just get all these, you know, for me, I love the humor and stuff. But I also love the interesting news stuff, you know. Uh, there's there's so many, yeah, there's just so many fun. And, and just the creative stuff and the people who write skits and actors, obviously, and things like that. So you get to kind of, and to me, honestly, it's just, you get to see that everybody's got such a fun point of view you know everyone's got a sense of humor and their creativity is fantastic and, so. and, and i'm learning to twerk and there you That's go it. <laughs> there was a there was a there was a twerk tutorial that i actually did as a joke and i was horrendous but it really isn't i mean that's the funny thing my daughters never sees anything that i see so when I did a thing about Dennis Franz on NYPD Blue, I got a ton of comments because there's a ton of people in their 40s, 50s, and mm -hmm. 60s. Some of the biggest creators are, you know, 70, 80, you know, and they have like a million, two million followers. You know, you, you just don't know. You can, like I said, it's literally for anyone, for anyone. And so I thought when I put up Dennis Franz, I was like, oh, that's not the same as putting up you know, Matthew Gray Googler from Criminal Minds, you know, because that one was a huge video for me. I had no idea he had such a huge fan base. Uh, but there you go. There was all these people who said, oh, I love that show. I love that show. And I go, well, then they have to be older people, you know? There's no 20-somethings and no NYPD Blue. So... So it's been it's I did that's that's the reason I like it, just because I also am a, more of a film person, obviously. So yeah. we... Us us old people have taken over the kids' shit again. We've just, oh yeah, yeah, there's videos about that too. Oh, yeah. and that's really funny. There's videos about how you know, but say yeah yeah yeah. You know, I know you're mad at us, but uh, we're the people who hire. When, you. We're the ones who have the money. When, when so. I first went on the app, uh, um, I came out of it feeling vindicated because uh, people my age were called lumber snacks. <laughs> so, so slightly overweight older men you know uh, we, we were lumber snacks yeah. i said hey, I, can, I can live with that everybody this has been I scarefest tv uh sean thank you so much for coming on tonight uh, it's been fun catching up thank with you, you and i'm sure i'll be seeing you soon chad yes sir. thanks for showing up everybody this has been scarefest tv catch you next week